It says it's at 89, if that's true, but whatever. Going down. I'm going to leave it at 75 just for a second, and I'm going to do the other side. Sure. Hey, guys. Today's going to be all about making an emergency inflation kit for my Land Rover LR3. Um, I'll show you in a minute here, but... Uh, you'll see that the Rover is just down on all fours. It's completely deflated. I even had to strip off the off-road tires and put on the, the street tires just because it was actually starting to hit because it was so low. And I'm going through and I'm gonna be troubleshooting that in the future, but for the interim, I want it fixed now. And so what I've got in mind is I'm gonna put in a, a system whereby I think I'll be able to inflate each individual air strut at will. And I'll show you the pieces I have here that I'm gonna pull it together with. The first one is tubing. So this tubing is six millimeter outer, four millimeter inner, and this should be a good match for the tubing that actually runs through the entire rover. Now, the other thing is we have to have a way to connect and splice into our existing system. So I have these little quick connects. These quick connects, so far, they're just so easy. So if they actually work without leaks, I'm going to be amazed. You just plug in one side, plug in the other, and then I'm going to plug in my splice line to the third output, and we should be able to connect into the rover system without damaging it. Well, we will have to cut it. This is not completely reversible in that sense. And lastly, I have these particular valves. So these valves are, uh, well, I'll open it later. I'll show you in detail. These valves are Schrader to a six millimeter outer tube connector. So this should enable us that we could, with any pump, that being your air compressor, even a bicycle pump, if you could achieve the pressure you needed, could splice in and add air to the strut at will. That's our goal. If you want to stick with me today, we'll find out if it works. Um, I'm optimistic, but well, let's give it a go. Okay, so the first major question is gonna be where to splice in. So I'm gonna come in. Here is the front air transfer block. You probably don't have a cutout like this on yours, you shouldn't. But I'm gonna take out a couple of the nuts pull it back, and then I'm going to try to access the two airlines off of that transfer block to uh, splice into. Hey, let me show you what I did. I took uh, this one screw out of the bottom right here in the front. That makes it so I can pull this back. Now you can unbutton the things on the side a little bit more too, but I think this is going to be, give me enough room that I can access the lines that I want here on the, on the block. So thank you to my brother. Um, he sent me the wiring, the air diagrams for this transfer block and the bottom one here I would think so you have three lines you got yeah, I'm gonna turn on the flashlight and it'll be easier to see okay so you got uh, as I was mentioning you have three airlines you've got this one with the white stripe you've got the black one on top you got the green one now looking at this air transfer block and here's the electrical connector if you're ever interested in that um, and looking at this, I would think green is the air supply in, and then the two blacks are left and right, right? Since you got two air struts. <laughs> but that's not the case. Um, the green one is actually what goes to the driver's side wheel. The white stripe is the air supply, and the black one on top is the passenger side wheel. So we're actually going to be splicing into this green one as well as the top black one. And the reason I'm splicing into those instead of just the white striped air supply one is that the block, my understanding is that this block shuts off its valves when it doesn't receive energy. So if we were in an emergency situation and we didn't have any power going to this block, maybe the wires got cut, it would actually close, which means no matter how much air we try to feed into this block, it's not gonna split it to the two tires. So we're gonna splice directly after the block into the lines that go, like the green one that goes to the driver's side wheel and the top black one that goes to the passenger side wheel. So I'm gonna clean up those lines next and then we're gonna cut and splice. Okay, and now to see if we can 
clip in this tri piece. Hopefully my calculations are good. There we go. I'm gonna put in a test feet fit here before we do any permanent mounting and bring it to the outside of the vehicle and we'll see if we can put any air pressure in the opposite side. Okay, so this is what we're looking at here. I've got a splice into the green line. My blue line is going up and towards the front of the car. So that's where I think I'm gonna finally have them mounted. I've got this little guy here. We're gonna take off the cap. As a Schrader valve, and we're gonna see if we can attach our air compressor to it and get some air into the driver's side. Okay, I'm gonna get ready to make cut number two. Cut number two is gonna be right about here. On mine. Okay, let's check out the ends, see if they're pinched. They are, so we're going to try to round them back out. Connect the T fitting. That one. That one. Now I'm going to get some tubing to put in there. Okay, that's our T fitting for the passenger side. So here I'll try to show you how these fittings attach. The back nut comes off. This then slides over top. Oop, but before I do that, I need to take this nut and slide it onto the hose. There you go, that's on there nice and then this is going to really cinch it down. Okay, there's that. Then here's where Schrader valve comes. Okay, it may not look like much, but we've it's a big improvement. So the side is now sitting considerably higher, well considerably, more than an inch higher and then the opposing side that we put air into. And I found our, our leak was just that the core of the Schrader valve wasn't spun in tightly enough, so it seems like we don't have any leaks. My only limiting factor right now in testing is just that my air compressor goes up to 100 and the operating normal strut uh, pressure is about, I'd have to look it up, it's like 114 to 140 or something like that and it just slightly below 150 so if i had a compressor that could do 150 i'd be set but this is already keeping it off its bump stops which is a big improvement okay now we got it now i've put uh, you've got these two long hoses both with different schrader valve fittings in there fed in there i have them long and off center because i plan to mount them in different places so we'll tidy that up in a bit but now with both sides sharing the pressure we're totally up. It's great. So to get a higher PSI in the strut, I haven't checked it, but there you go. From slammed in the back, jacked up in the front, using the front and this air compressor here. So there we go. I'm gonna, obviously I gotta tackle the back ones next. To do that, I'm gonna have to move to the driver's side rear instead of the passenger front. Well, at least that's my plan right now and I'll, I'll start scoping that but I'm excited. Look at that. It's back up. Just forced it. 
Okay, for reference, the transfer block side to side for the back axle is right behind this tire above the A-arms. I took out the spare tire so I could get a little bit more access. Here you can see the green line that goes to the driver's side, air strut. And then on this side, you can sort of see that little hoop that's black for the air strut on this side. Taking out the spare tire is going to just give me a little bit more room to get in there. It's, it's still really tight. It's not like great. But I can snake my hand in there and touch the green line. I'm going to try to cut it right about here and then splice it in. Um, it'll be hard to get camera of that happening, but we'll see if I can get it to go. Okay, that line is cut. Next, I'm going to put in the three just like you've seen before tight so I'll show you after okay the fitting is in there next I'm gonna wind out some hose and put it in that third slot and we should be good to call this one set okay so here it is with the tubes lined up what I've done is I've just rooted them back here and exiting where the hitch plate is I'll fancy it up later like I do at the front but right now it's just here the tail hitch. I'll probably put some standoffs or something so you don't have rubbing um, with the metal because I don't want them to chafe over time. Okay, next I'm going to hit this one. Okay, I made the cut. I actually ended up going in behind here. You can see the tube there. I'm about to attach the T fitting. I've got it in my hand. I've already attached the tube just so I don't have to fool around in that tight space. Okay, here's what it looks like. Got it spliced in up there. Sort of hard for you to see there. It's teed in. Comes over. I'm gonna have it come back through here. I think I maybe I'll zip tie it up here on this rubber mounting since it's a lot not sharp. Then it comes through the hitch. Out this port. And we got our two valves. Let's see if we can make it stand up. Okay, so we've got all the tubes in. I might have put a little bit too much air in the back, but that's great <laughs> that it lifted it up. I actually didn't need to do the jack up scenario in the back. I could just apply the air straight from the back because the lower, the back struts take less pressure than the front just because the engine's not that in there, so it's lighter. So I'm gonna air out the back till it looks normal and we'll see how it goes. it's at 89 if that's true but whatever going down okay, I'm gonna drop to the other side this is 60 psi right okay, now 60 There we go. The rover is standing again. Standing rover. Like telling it who's boss. Nathan is the boss. Yeah. The words of Dana Tucker. Don't force it. Use a bigger hammer. <laughs> this is, this so is the force it. <laughs> Yeah, I'll have to tidy up the lines and stuff. And there we go. The rover's up and active again, and it isn't using any computers. So I've bypassed all the suspension faults. It's just manual on PSI. And now that I've already rooted this in, if I want to, I can do a different management system and bypass the Land Rover entirely for suspension management. Or I can fix the Rover 1 and have this as an emergency backup. This is extremely useful. Yep.